what are you going to do when that happens? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They said, if you all put this information out, and these people going to do this. I said, well, the real question is, what are we going to do after they do that? Not, let's be worried and concerned and fearful about the process of what we can, we, which we cannot avoid. We cannot avoid becoming men and being gods and presenting ourselves and ruling this planet Earth. That's not, that's not something we can avoid. So whatever comes along with the package, you know, we here to open it up completely and fully. It's a reality. So people can keep talking like we have some other option. Because they do. They have another option. But what, 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 what if the CIA and the FBI do this and these people do that? I said, well, you got other options. What, what if you don't do what you're supposed to do? Then what are you going to do? Not achieve. <laughs> and not manifest. And not put any effort to bringing your highest vision into existence. That's the only reality. So it's a bigger failure to have not at all chose to manifest the greatness of our legacy. That's a bigger failure than to have put forth effort and have come across challenges. It's a bigger failure to have not even did not just sat there and not even did not. It's a reality. So these people are not making intellectual statements. They're making a statement from a position that they have got stuck in. They're making the conversation from a position. I was looking at the whole Barack Obama thing, and um, it seems positive. And that's people's biggest argument that, you know, Barack Obama's running for, for president, or, whatever, or he's, he's president now, and this is a positive thing for positive people. And they present it like that. But if you really listen to them, they're passive. Because every idea you bring to them, they say Barack Obama is going to do this. I say, wait a minute now. Whatever Barack Obama do is what he going to do. Now, what are we going to do in the here and now? But they, and then they throw in the Barack Obama in there as, as a saying that, well, we ain't got to do nothing now. We got Barack Obama. Do you see the attitude that they're throwing? Why do they keep throwing that in? I mean, who cares about Barack Obama? What he do or don't do, whether he make it or can't make it, if they accept this bill or that, and, and it, you know, who cares? If he do good, if he don't, but what are, in the meantime, what are we going to do? So behind that Barack Obama conversation is now, now we really don't have to do nothing. Let's wait and see what he's going to do. So while it seems progressive and positive like they support Barack Obama, they really hide their laziness behind it. And now they have a greater excuse not to do nothing. Because we got a black president now, we really ain't got to do nothing. And if you don't do nothing now, watch what's going to happen. Watch what happens when people become passive and don't use their God-given energy within their being to manifest their reality and their destiny. And they wait on somebody else to do it. Watch what happens to those people and what, what situation and circumstances that they end up in. And we got to have that attitude for our people because we've cried over them. But we got to know that if our black people do not stand up as gods and goddesses and take their divine position, then they will receive chastisement through this planet in this very life, no matter who they are. Mama, cousin, nephew, niece, uncle, it's a reality. They will be chastised. And as due to not manifesting their divinity, their divine selves, they're going to have some karma that they will experience in this life. Due to that, when you know that, that's a whole nother attitude that you see. Because it's not really your concern. All you can do is project the truth to them. But if they avoid it, then they got to deal with it on an individual level. It ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's not so much collective. On an individual level, they have to deal with the reality of the decisions that they make. They have to deal with these challenges. And they have to be allowed to be. That's not our job. We just putting the divine consciousness out there so that they can grasp onto it and make a divine decision. But if they choose not to, then it's karma for that. It's karma for not knowing that you need a naturopathic healing center to heal yourself, to study herbs, to build yourself as, and become a physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional deity. 
It's a sacrifice for not doing that. That 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 you pay over time. You will suffer on this earth for avoiding the real process of divine becoming. It's a reality. And ninety percent of the circumstances and situations that people go through are is because of that. They are on a lack of development and their lack their, their, their choice not to develop in the most divine way for their well being. So there's divine karma, karma that these people will suffer for not developing. Every time the police come in our community and beat the shit out of somebody, <laughs> that truly is divine karma. Because that community did not get together and become sincere nationalistically about the condition of their community and their people, because they didn't, they lose their sons now. Correct? They lose their nephews now, brothers and cousins. Why? Because that community did not develop realistically in a nationalistic manner to see to the well-beingness of its existence. So as it refuses to do that, that community will receive divine karma. We can reach as many of them as we can to try to let them know and make them aware of what they are going to deal with. It ain't just the white man, it's their karma. Because the European can only get in at their negligent points. Do you see the one maker? He can't get in where there's no negligence. If you leave no door open, there's no door for him to get into. So their very negligence becomes their fault. Their negligence becomes their fault. They blame the European doctors for their health. But no European doctor told them to sit and eat all that shit. But then it comes to a point where now their health is in his hands. Is this right? Now he has a decision to say, well, you're going to take this or do this. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you that. But you would never have got to that point had you become a deity and was concerned about your own health and lifestyle, and eating habits, and what you do and do not do based upon your own well-beingness. So when we end up at the, on the devil's table, that is karma. That is the byproduct of our negligence. The byproduct of our lack of concern and our apathy for ourselves and our own community. We end up on the devil. That's karma. It's a reality. If we choose to heal our own people and heal our own community and heal ourselves, there's no way we can end up in that predicament. If we change our diet as individuals and make health, health our utter concern, because people make the clothes on their back more important than their own health. They'll invest more in bullshit and trying to seem and look important and be important to all these people. That's more important than their damn colon and heart and lungs and kidneys. How you view me is more important than what's really going on with me. Now, what's going to be the karma of that, that attitude and that perspective? They don't eat to live. They eat for pleasure. They don't eat because they're concerned about nutrition and, and what the purpose of food really is for in the body. They eat because of pleasure. They eat to be accepted in this social group, while they sit at a plate. They eat to be accepted by them, those, and they. They're not eating for their own health. So what is the karma for that decision? Deteriorated health. So the same things that we have argued with our parents about, we argue with the whole community about. And our, our whole community will eventually end up like our parents one day. <laughs> How did you think they got there? You see what I'm making and you telling them, you know, you should not eat this and you should not eat that, mom, you should not do that. And they saying, I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, what is the karma for that? What is the karma for choosing to be unconscious and not take the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for those who have compassion and care for you? What is the karma for that? So nobody should be mad and upset when these manners of trials and tribulations manifest themselves when they know, but by their own negligence, by their own lack of concern and care that they found themselves in those different situations and circumstances. So we're here to lighten the load of karma by enlightening people to a divine way to exist. This is what we call divine culture. 
we enlightened them. 